Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trailmakers. And today, the plan is create a car that has a deployable spike strip in it. And the reason why we're in the test map is because we're going to need a lot of space. Because if we can create a nice, successful spike strip that can deploy out of the car and then stick to the ground, then I'm going to try to use an automatically driving car that just drives off straight. And we have to try to get in front of it deploy the spike strip and see if we can stop it with the spike strip. So that, that, that's, a, that's a lot to accomplish in this episode. Uh, w wish me luck on this one. Okay, so I think the best place to start with this is the spike strip, because once we have a spike strip the way we want it, then we know how big we need to build our car to make it functionable inside the car. Okay, so here is my spike strip design. Now this is going to be the deployed uh, look of it. But when it is in the car, it is going to be a little bit more compact like this. So the idea is that once you deploy it out of the car, these pistons will extend, giving it a little bit wider of a width than the actual wheels of the car itself. Because I realize if you're going to deploy a spike strip from the car, you got to be able to fit it inside the car, which would kind of mean that the car could drive over it in the first place without hitting it. So it needs to be able to expand at least. So now this presents the strange obstacle of the pistons by default in the build mode are always extended, but I want this to be by default inside of the car. And if it's already extended, then it's not going to fit inside the car. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I think what I'm going to have to do is build the car in the deployed position. And then basically we have kind of like an undeploy button. I don't know. It's going to be weird. I'm gonna do some playing around and see if I can come up with a system that this actually works for. All right, guys, I've been fooling around with a couple of different ideas on how to do this deployable spike strip mechanism, and I think I'm gonna have to simplify things a little bit because I wanted the spike strip originally to be completely hidden, and then the car opens up, the spike strip comes out and deploys on the ground. But um, trying to create a way to hide this spike strip is actually, it's just not working out. I wanted to have this system where a compartment kind of opens and closes, but the actual anchor spikes, they take up a lot of invisible collision space and like this can't even close. You can see that it interferes with the actual spike strip for some reason. So I just don't, I just don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I think I'm just going to have it sticking out of the back, kind of like a spiky bumper. And then if someone ends up crashing into the back of you and gets stuck to you, you can actually just release them. All right, so this is what the back of my vehicle is pretty much going to look like. And the way that this works is when you press space, the spike strip comes out and then expands a little bit to cover more of a wheelbase. And uh, I haven't programmed the release mechanism yet because I don't want to get rid of the spike strip. I still need it. But uh, yeah, I think that this will look pretty good. So now I have to go ahead and build the rest of the car and make it an actual working car. So here we go.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to prototype number one, completely untested, only built so far. I decided to give it like a nice red and black scrap camo, but uh, let's see how this thing drives. And it's not, it's not that fast, is it? But, okay. I, I was hoping it would be a little bit faster. Ooh, ooh, this thing can actually drift. I accidentally created kind of like a drift car. Look at that. That's actually not too bad. This is not the purpose of the car. All right, well, it seems like the fastest I'll be able to get this thing up to is almost 200 kilometers per hour. It actually caps out at like 199. I don't think I've actually seen it go over to the 200 mark. That's kind of funny. All right, so let's test out the actual spike strip mechanism. Will it drop out as expected? Oh, I saw 200 for a second. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, spike strip. Okay, I forgot to, uh, I guess I forgot to program the, the, these things. Okay, now I programmed the detachable block, so now it should work. Three, two, one, spike strip! Whoa! Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did it contract? Wait, why did it contract back? It's supposed to be on a toggle, so... Oh, that's annoying. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to have it not do that now. Yeah, so I have it set to toggle, but apparently the toggle doesn't matter once it detaches from the seat controls. So, uh, I think I'm going to have to... I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I solved the issue, but it's not the ideal solution for me. There's probably a better way to use logic to solve this that uh, I just I just can't think of right now. But the issue was that I had the pistons by default set to their minimum. So I have to have them by default set to their maximum. So when it detaches, they stay at their maximum. So now it starts completely expanded and out like this. But when I press control, I can put it back in here. And then when I press space, it'll actually come out and then drop down in its full expanded form which will then oh wow oh okay all right well that didn't i mean as far as the spike strip goes that did like the opposite of everything it should do it destroyed like everything except the tires oh there we go <laughs> the whole section is like moving separately from everything else Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm basically going to duplicate this car and create one that just goes automatically, kind of inspired by that combat mini game thing that uh, I looked at in the last Best Builds episode. And then we're going to try to get in front of the car and see if we can trip it up with the spike strip. All right, this is easier said than done. Uh, apparently, this car is too complicated, too complex to be duplicated. We're at 410 out of 700 complexity points, so we can't duplicate it. But hold on, I got an idea. We don't need the spike strip on the car that is being chased. Oh no, why doesn't it tell me my complexity points anymore? I need to know how many- I gotta know how many points this car is. Alright, and then I guess I can also just delete a bunch of engines out of this too. Because we don't want it to be as fast as the chase car. Oh, finally! I've done it. 699 out of 700 complexity points. Uh-oh. I hope that a detachment block isn't more than one point. Oh, yes. All right, and then just to distinguish them more, let's go ahead and just have this one be a completely different color scheme. All right, 700 out of 700 complexity points. Let's see if this actually works as intended. If I press number one, please take off. Is it... Is that as fast as it goes? Is that like the actual speed? Uh, ho hold, hold on, hold on a second. Please don't tell me that's as fast as you actually go. Wait, wait, no, 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 come back, come back, come back, come back! Come, okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> I think it is! Are you serious? I didn't delete that many engines, did I? Oh, this is gonna be boring if that's the case. I might need to... I might need to just create a smaller... Uh, secondary car. Yeah, this this is pathetic. All right, well, it looks like, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to create a secondary car that I can at least make smaller and more fitting for the spike strip. Okay, so I just built a quick secondary car here. It's much smaller, gonna be much easier to attach to the other one, and it goes, uh, about 30 kilometers an hour slower, so we should be able to catch up to it. All right, now let's see if this works. We press number one. Oh, that, that was weird. I thought it was taking part of the car with me. All right, let's try to catch up to this thing and see if this works. Oh, wait, let's go ahead and 
Oh, why am I wobbling? Why are my wheels wobbling? Well, we're definitely able to catch up with it, no problem. Oh, wait, no, it's not working. Why isn't it working? I set the engines to toggle. Oh, what? I can... What? Uh, when I press backwards, the car goes backwards. But when I press forwards, it doesn't... Okay, okay. all right. Apparently, we need to adjust some things here. All right, I think part of the issue was that I didn't actually get rid of the reverse control on this other car. So now it should work. I hope it works. Please work. Okay. All right, are you gonna keep going? Is that as fast? I thought it would go faster. It was supposed to be going like 160. Wasn't it? Oh, it's picking up some speed. It just takes a while to get there, apparently. All right, I could probably add another engine in there to make it go a little bit faster, but let's see if the spike strip works. All right, here we go. You go ahead and get in front of it, then... Oh, hold on. I'm actually losing control here. All right, and spike strip. Are you serious? Are you serious? All those anchors and you couldn't stick to one of them? Really? <laughs> oh. You could just do that, I guess. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do a risk here. I'm gonna duplicate this engine. When I was testing it personally, this was actually just breaking the 200 kilometers an hour mark. So it might be faster than us if it does the same thing. For some reason, the engine sounds disappear when we do the detachment block with uh, vehicles like this. Oh wait, I forgot to, uh, here we go. Why am I shaking? My wheels won't stay straight. All right, well, here we go. You can see we actually are really, really matched on speed. So we're gonna go in front of it and then deploy the spike strip. Oh, that worked perfect. I mean, it's it's not really like a spike strip. It's more of just like a instant stop your vehicle strip. All right, look, at it's like smoking because the tires are burning out. All right, well, that time we were actually successful. Here, and can I just destroy it by doing that? It's so fragile. It is such a fragile car compared to this beast. All right, we gave it a bit of a head start. Let's see if we can catch up and see if the large steering hinge that I put on here gets rid of our wobble. And it looks like it did. All right, I like it when we have simple solutions like that. All right, so this is actually, this is actually gonna take some time to catch up. And we are breaking 200 easier now. Oh, I actually forgot to, oh, great. Okay, hold on, there we go, there we go. Now we're in. So after building these cars, I'm realizing that when you build bigger cars, you just have so many more points of contact with the air resistance that it's so much more difficult to uh, to go really, really fast. Because that car has two engines. This one has like 20, and I can barely catch up to that one. Guys, there is like a half a kilometer an hour difference in speed between these two things. This is the slowest overtake I've ever seen ever <laughs> but it's happening <laughs> we're going to do this what this isn't even going to be a successful one this is not going to work for some reason all right here we go let me get in front of it and spike strip yes it worked <laughs> oh man that was rough Ooh, man i like this car turns nice i really like the way that this car turns all right and <laughs> Spike strip, uh, gotta taste my own medicine there. All right, well, the spike strip may not have worked exactly the way it had originally planned, but we got it to a working state where we can actually get in front of a car, deploy a spike strip, and then... <laughs> Stop the car. One way or another, the car is likely to get stopped, whether it's in its place or in pieces. So it'd be awesome. The, the idea would be like if the car actually had some type of AI where it would actually have some evasive maneuvers and things like that rather than going straight. But uh, I think for all intents and purposes, we have a successful spike strip. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you want to see more awesome Trailmakers content like this, then you're going to want to check out this playlist on the end screen right here. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.